how to draw diagrams of axial and shear forces, and bending moment for a three-hinged arch. Consider an example of a three-hinged arch that is built with the equation. Where, F, is the boom of the arch, L, is the span of the arch, X and Y, are coordinates of the arch. To begin with, let's draw the system of coordinates y o x. Then, with the equation, find the coordinates of the arch and draw it. Let the span of the arch be equal to 15 meters, and the boom of the arch is 3.2 meters. The arch has two pin supports. And one hinge. Let's designate left pin support as, capital, A. Right support as, capital, B. And hinge as, capital, C. The origin of the coordinate system and the left support, A, coincide. The arch is subjected to the point and uniformly distributed loads. The point loads are equal to 20 and 30 kilonewtons. And uniformly distributed load has a magnitude of 10 kilonewtons per meter. Now, let's derive the equations for internal forces determination in the arch. To determine the internal forces in the arch, the section method is used. Split the arch by a cross-section, in any spot, relative to the origin of the coordinate system. Let's designate this cross-section as the capital K. Now, consider only the left part of the arch. The action of the right part on the left part of the arch is transmitted through internal forces in the section. It is the bending moment, shear, and axial forces, which occur to the left part of the cross-section. Where, axis x1, is the tangent to the arch, in section, k. Coordinates yk, and xk, are the gravity center of cross-section k. The bending moment, shear, and axial forces must be determined all along the arch. But how to do it? It is necessary to write down the static equilibrium equations. So, then let's write static equilibrium equations for the left part of the arch. But to start, let's resume with the all design model of the arch, and the left part of the arch drawn separately for clarity. Also, show support reactions in the pinned support. Before writing the equilibrium equations, one needs to understand, that the arch is a curved beam. Moreover, for the arch, and the line beam, with the same vertical load, the vertical support reactions, are the same. Make sure, that the vertical support reactions for the beam and arch are the same. For now, let's set aside the model of the left part of the arch, we will return to it later. Draw a beam with the same span as the arch, and load it with the same vertical load. Now, write the bending moment equilibrium equation about point A. From this equation, the vertical support reaction, in the right support B, can be determined. So, the support reaction in the right support B, is 62 kilonewtons. Next, write in the same way, the bending moment equilibrium equation, about point B, for determination of the support reaction in the left support A. So, as we can see the support reaction in the left support A, is 48 kilonewtons. Let's write down it, on the design model of the arch. Then, if the equilibrium equations for the determination of the support reactions for the beam, are written, it can be seen, that it is the same as in the arch. What can this indicate? This fact indicates, that the values of the shear force and the bending moment, in any cross-section of the beam, from the vertical load, are the components of the algebraic sum of the shear force, and the bending moment from all forces in the arch, in the same cross-section. This can be seen, when the equilibrium equations about the center of gravity, of an arbitrary cross-section in the arch, are written down. Now, let's return to the design model of the left part of the arch, which was cut off, by an arbitrary cross-section K, and write down, common equilibrium equations, of the determination of the internal forces in the arch. To begin with, let's write down the moment equilibrium equation about cross-section K. 
This equation consists of three components. It is the bending moment m, which must be determined. It is the moment from vertical support reaction, multiplied by distance xk. And, it is one of those components, of the algebraic sum of the bending moment in the arch, which we talked about earlier. This component, is equal to the bending moment, from vertical loads, for the beam, in the same cross-section. So, there is a possibility, to designate it, through m for the beam, in section k. And, the last component of the moment equilibrium equation, about cross-section k, for the arch, is the moment, from horizontal support reaction, multiplied by distance y k. Rewrite the moment equilibrium equation, about cross-section k, with what has been said. So, the moment equilibrium equation, in an arbitrary cross-section, k, for the arch is obtained. Next, must be obtained the shear force equilibrium equation for the cutoff part of the arch. To do this, draw the axis y1, perpendicular to the x1 axis through cross-section k, and decompose all forces into y1 components. This equilibrium equation also has three components. Now, let's take a look at each component, where, capital Q, is the shear force in section K, for the arch, which must be obtained. This is the component of support reaction VA, which dropped on axis Y1. For decomposed support reaction VA, it must be multiplied on the cosine of angle phi K. This is the component of horizontal support reaction HA, which dropped on axis Y1. For decompose horizontal support reaction HA, it must be multiplied on the sinus of angle phi K. In this equilibrium equation, as in the previous case, vertical support reaction VA, can be shown, as shear force Q, for beam in the arbitrary cross-section K. So, rewrite this equilibrium equation for the shear force in the arch. The last is the need to get the axial force equilibrium equation in the arbitrary cross-section K. For this, there is a need to decompose all forces into x1 components. Here, as in the previous two equations, there are only three components. Let's take a look at them as well. Where, N, is an axial force in the arbitrary cross-section K, for the arch, which must be obtained. This is the component of vertical support reaction VA, which dropped on axis X1. For decompose vertical support reaction VA, it must be multiplied, on the sinus of angle phi K. This is the component of horizontal support reaction HA, which dropped on axis X1. For decompose horizontal support reaction HA, it must be multiplied, on the cosine of angle phi k. So, when this equilibrium equation for axial force in the arbitrary cross-section k, in the arch, is rewritten, the common equation for axial force determination, in the arch, in any cross-section, will be gotten. These equations, are used for determining internal forces in the arch, in any cross-section, based on the beam internal forces analysis. We will not dwell on determining the internal forces in the beam, since this has already been described in detail in previous videos. So, for convenience, let's do all the calculations in tabular form. But, before, let's determine the horizontal support reaction in the arch. To do this, let's write the bending moment equilibrium equation, about hinge C but just for only the left part of the arch. As we can see, the horizontal support reaction HA, is 60.94 kN. Also, it is worth noting, that in a three-hinged arch, the horizontal support reactions, are the same, on both supports, therefore, the support reaction HB, is also equal to 60.94 kN. Let's write down, the value of the horizontal support reactions on the design model of the arch. 
So, now, using the equations obtained, the diagrams of internal forces in the arch are drawn. As mentioned earlier, the calculation is performed in tabula. It is also convenient if a spreadsheet system for calculations is used. Now, let's split the arch, into regions at characteristic points, and at least, once between these characteristic points by cross-sections, and then, let's number these sections. The characteristic points are the supports, the hinge, and the spots where the loads are applied. First, we calculate and draw the shear force diagram in the arch. To do this, draw a table, where the first column is the number of the cross-section. Note, that in spots, where a point load is applied, the shear force must be determined on both, the left and right sides of the point. In this case, it is cross sections 3 and 5. In the table, angle phi, is the angle of the tangent in an arbitrary cross section. It is calculated as the derivatives dy over dx, of the function of the arch. So, let's put and calculate the data in the table. Now, using the calculated data, the shear force diagram is drawn. We clarify, that Q0, in the table, is the value of the shear force for the beam in the same cross-section. Well, let's calculate the shear force Q0 for the beam for example. Let's it be the cross-section number 4. So, the shear force diagram Q, for the arch, is drawn. Now let's draw the bending moment diagram M for the arch. This calculation is also carried out in tabula. So, let's put and calculate the data in the table. Using the calculated data, the bending moment diagram is drawn. We clarify that, M0, in the table, is the value of the bending moment for the beam in the same cross-section. Let's calculate the bending moment M0 for the beam, for example, in cross-section number 8. So, the bending moment diagram for the arch is gotten. Now let's start drawing the diagram of axial forces in the arch. As in previous cases, a tabula is used for calculations. Finally, the diagrams of internal forces in the arch are obtained. Thank you for watching. Please click on the thumb up and subscribe to the channel to see new videos.